I've seen plenty of how to sharpen chisel videos where they take the chisel at the end and they trim off hair off their hand or they cut a piece of paper and I could just never get them that sharp when I sharpen them myself. And that was until recently. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my process and teach you how to get your chisels razor sharp using a few basic tools. <laughs> Okay, let's review everything that I'll be using throughout this sharpening process. First, we're gonna need a chisel. This is the one that I will be sharpening. It's a cheap one that I picked up from one of the big box stores. Next, we're gonna need some whetstones, and I've got two of them. Each one of them are dual-sided. One has 400 grit on one side and 1,000 grit on the other, and then the other whetstone has 3,000 grit on one side and 8,000 on the other. This is a honing guide. It's a fairly inexpensive product, and what it does is it helps it helps lock the chisel in at the right angle when it comes time to sharpening the bevel. If you're new to sharpening chisels, I would recommend picking one of these things up because it makes the process a heck of a lot easier. Next up, we have a leather strop with some polishing compound. And this is a must have because it removes these like little microscopic level inconsistencies of the edge, which will make your chisel razor sharp. And finally, a lapping plate. If you want your chisels, planes, and other tools to be nice and sharp, you're gonna need to make sure that your whetstones are nice and flat. And a lapping plate will help you achieve this. This one in particular is made by a company named Maffalo. Mafalo. It's their Maxi Smart Lapping Plate. And they sent this to me for free. And in exchange, they asked if I could test it out and talk about it in a video. And since I didn't have one, I said yes. I'll talk about this uh, more in a second. All right, so let's start the sharpening process. So the first thing that we need to do is take our whetstones and put them into some water for about five to 10 minutes or until they stop bubbling. Now, while those are soaking, I need to prep the lapping plate since this is my first time using it. Out of the box, the stone may have some high diamond particles from the manufacturing process, so they provide a little diamond breaker to help remove them. So I ran the plate under water for about two minutes and then I used the breaker to break up those high spots so it won't scratch the whetstone during the flattening process. After the wet stones have stopped bubbling, it's time to flatten them. First, grab a pencil and then draw some lines on the wet stone. This will help let us know when the wet stone is flat and then we can move on to the other side. Take the lapping plate and place it in your sink and run it under the water. Then using straight movements and a little bit of pressure, run the wet stone over the lapping plate back and forth, checking your process until all the pencil marks are gone. So there are quite a few of these diamond flattening stones out there in the market, and I've read some reviews on the less expensive ones, and there's a common theme for most of them. They aren't flat to start, or after a few uses, they're pretty much useless. I mentioned earlier that this is the first lapping plate I've ever used, so I can't personally compare this to another. However, I can say that this specific diamond plate feels like it's really well made, and the grooves in it uh, help to avoid any of like the slurry getting stuck, and most importantly, I've never Never been able to actually re achieve this level of sharpness on my chisels before owning this thing. So if you're interested in checking this out, I'll leave a link to this exact one in the video description down below. All right, let's move on. With our whetstones nice and flat, it's time to work on the back or the flat side of the chisel first. Place your whetstone with the 400 grit side facing up in the silicone holder, or if you don't have one of those, just like a normal dish towel or, or really anything to stop it from moving around during the sharpening process. Since this chisel is brand new, you can see the markings on the back from the quick sharpening that they did at the factory. And our goal is basically to remove these markings because once we do, then we'll know that it's nice and flat. So start off by placing the chisel on the whetstone, keeping it flat, applying a little bit of pressure and moving it back and forth. I have some water next to me and I'll occasionally add some water to the whetstone if I notice that it's drying up a bit. And make sure that you're using the whole whetstone while sharpening and don't like stay on one side. I like to flip mine 180 degrees halfway through or so to make sure that I'm not favoring one side over the other. You'll probably spend the most time here working on the 400 grit side, and once the markings from the manufacturer are gone, then you'll know it's time to move up to the next grit. At this point, the back of the chisel is flat, but it still might have some minor inconsistencies, so that's why we're gonna repeat this same process all the way through the rest of the grits, following the same process as before. I'm sure there's a 
more precise way of knowing when it's time to switch grits, like checking for burrs, which is basically feeling the edge of the blade for the little metal shavings, but I kind of just look at it and see if it looks more smooth than how it was at the end of the last grit. I don't know. So I finished flattening with the 1000 grit, so now I am switching over to the whetstone and starting with 3000 grit first, and then I'll move on to 8000 grit right after, repeating the same process as before. When you're finished with the 8000 grit, it's time to take out the leather strop and the polishing compound. So put some of that compound on the leather, not a ton, and then repeat the same motion as before, like what you were doing with the whetstones. I do like maybe 15 strokes or so, and after the step, the back should be shiny and well polished. So yeah. All right, cool, we're done with that. So let's talk about the beveled side. So as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a honing guide, now would be the time to take that out. Each one of those honing guides is a little bit different, but the one that I have has some markings on the side that lets you know how far to set the chisel into the guide in order to bring it to the right angle, either 25 or 30 degrees. I whipped up this little jig earlier. It has two stops on it, one at 30 millimeters away from the edge, which would bring the chisel to 30 degrees, and another at 40 millimeters away that will bring it to 25 degrees. This helps set the chisel in the guide more precisely. But if you don't feel like measuring this out precisely, you can always just set your chisel down so the beveled part is flat against a flat surface and then lock it into the guide from there. Either way works. Now. This process is pretty much the same as before. Start with 400 grit and work your way up to 8000 grit and then finish things off with the leather strop. The only difference here is that the angle that you set with the chisel and the honing guide may not exactly line up with the angle that it currently has. So keep an eye on the bevel and just make sure that you can see that you're removing those markings from the manufacturer all the way up until the edge. And when it comes time to using the leather strop, I took it out of the honing guide and this way I had a little bit more control to apply a little bit more pressure. And once that bevel is looking nice and shiny, I flipped the chisel around and took like one or two passes on the flat side as well. And that's pretty much it. If you've got another sharpening tip that I didn't cover here, leave it down in the comments. And if you found the video helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already. And yeah, well, I'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.